Hello there everyone, it's Unstoppable Stiletzi, and yes, I kept my promise, here comes a second deathmatch 2 vs 2 in D3 for ya. You know, I really meant it this time, so let's see who's going to be in this one. So this time it's going to be Lakota and the uh, Dutch, John Stowe, we saw him the other day playing Dutch, and you know, he's pretty good with them. And then on the other side you got the Portuguese and the French. This is actually the Lakota from the Lakota mirror we saw the other day, so now he's going with France. Let's see how he does with the French Civ. Before we get started, let's look at the map real quick. This is Hungarian Plains once again, so again you got these nice little trade routes with the parallel native sites on them, on either side. In fact, our friend the Portuguese have already started to grab one of them and if we know anything about this Lakota here they are gonna grab this native site I can almost guarantee you that because you know why because they go with uh, I was gonna show yeah we could we could show it in the deck so um I don't know which of the decks it is but basically they go for the kinship ties really early on and they basically turn native embassies into town centers they will train villagers for you since you know kinship ties and locks villagers at the native embassies so we're probably going to see that let's get started though and see if my prediction was right i'm pretty certain that i'm right though i'm right on a lot of things uh well first step of doing is obviously to get the market because without the market and the big bun tech from the market you're not going to get kinship ties right out of the blue right See, with all that early XP, you can actually get five shipments from it, since the shipments are so cheap this early on in the game. And now we see the native site building, and once they do that, native embassies are going to come up. And once those native embassies are, are going to come up, it's sort of timed as the third card here to start the kinship ties. Villagers will start to train from them. And I wonder if we're going to see the fertility dance as well with the community plaza. I saw a bill on there doing that dance. First step, though, is to get the Wakina rifles through the kettle support, which gives them a bit of HP. This is really a good way to go since uh, these are basically a good starting unit that you can push forward and cause some pressure on your enemy. Only thing they would have to worry about, of course, is some Hussar or Corsair pressure. Also, they send adoption, as well as winter counts. This basically increases the XP you get from training villagers, and allows them to train faster. And also, this card here, winter counts, actually makes it so all the units and buildings provide more bounty or XP when they're created. We see France going for Voltaguires and moving right towards the Lakota's construction area, though. We do see the Wakina rifles engaging in what's considered aggressive policy which basically lets all the war hut units like the Wakina rifles construct buildings so they can build war huts they can build the corrals and they can build the teepees which boost the HP and the gather rate of nearby units so this basically gives the Lakota a way of building forward buildings without risking losing the economy from it quite a powerful play we do see Fertility Dance coming on to aid in the four queues of villagers that Lakota have going for them right now. Also, they're going for some bow riders to sort of phalanx against these early hussars that the French have started to make. So it seems like the skirmishers are fighting over here against the Wakinas. They just picked off a couple bow riders on this side. That wave of Hussars was effectively destroyed by the Bow Riders, and now they're going to pursue the Voltaguires. Let's see if they can do that, though. Should be a pretty interesting situation. And on this side, we see the Dutch. Oh, wow, they just let a group of uh, Portuguese Dragoons go right through them. Uh, how far are they going to get, though, is the question. Alright, so they shot one of the Villies down. And now they're going to make their way into the back of these houses. Wow, that's annoying. Not even going to get the finish. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, they could have burned this house down, but I guess they were too scared of the Dutch skirmishers killing them, so they decided to hightail it out of there. They are going to get these uh, villagers, though, these merchants. I'm 
can almost yeah that one's down this one just got away luckily um, how oh no that's not good right on top of your community plaza too that is not good you know the community plaza is like base base is flagging it right here base 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 camp you know don't let them burn my community plaza down don't let them kill the villagers dancing there because it's the dances at the community plaza that facilitates the strength of the native sibs. Fertility dance makes the units train faster. The attack dance improves the attack rate of your units. You really need that community plaza that working hard all the time to get the full advantage of the native sibs. Uh, so now they're starting to get great hunter with the bison. I see bison at that town center location. This is basically in response to the loss of food. They really need... Oh yeah, and they were also able to boost up their food a lot with the Great Hunter. Basically how the Great Hunter works is that card. The more food you've gathered so far at that point in the game from the animals, it sends a large sum of food right into your inventory, so not even in crates. Basically being a lifeline for the Lakota to keep training their Wakina rifles as needed. Also deciding to ship in the Dakota support, which will send to some uh, Tajunki Prowlers. Tajunki Prowlers are great. They're similar to the French Curacao, actually. You know, they have a splash attack. It can also go stealthy, hence the Prowler in its title. When you're playing as native civs, just as a rule of thumb, anything that has Prowler in its name means that that unit can go stealthy. Right from the moment it's available. Oh, wait a second. We see Hussars making a gain on these Wakina rifles. Will they be able to put some bow riders or something down to deal with these Hussars? Well, we see a couple of the Dutch riders still there. We see Dutch sort of hanging out around here to help their friend out. Luckily, Dutch was very smart to put this wall down because it does stall out Portugal quite a bit. So they can't go in for an immediate press, right? They have to sort of go through this area, which stalls them quite a bit. Now we sort of see the Tajuki Prowlers coming back in. They're going to try to snipe the mortar down. France has been using mortars for quite a bit to start shelling at the Lakota positions. If you can take the mortars out, that's security for the Lakota base that they can really be proud about. Uh, Botuka, your ores. Ah, that's interesting. So it actually makes the War Chief even more powerful and basically allows them to boost up these units even further. Notice how they use the community plaza dance that retrieves the explorer when it's down, so... It's basically the Native American replacement of ransoming. Doesn't cost you any coin at all and you don't give any money to your enemies, so... To me, that's, that's really powerful. And it definitely works really well when you have all your vills on the community plaza like this, since it's much faster. Alright, so we see some axe riders and Tushunki prowlers distracting the Voltic Wires and getting some good gains into them because France is right here with Royal Musketeers and Voltic Wires. Trying to get away now, it seems like, and do a bit of kiting, and now they can focus back on the Wakina Rifles. They're going to try to stay here as long as possible to deny them forward basing because you can see right here lots and lots of foundations. Lakota are going to try to build their way up as fast as they can upwards because the more of these buildings they can plop down, the easier time they're going to have at breaching the French base and eventually besting them in their own land. At the same time though, we see Portugal going for a very interesting choice here. They're taking advantage of the little wall they built over here as well as... Oh, never mind, I thought they were going to sneak up around this wall and start shelling things, but I guess that's good because, you know, Dutch could always put gates on their walls and then send some hussars to cut these down, so that makes a lot of sense. Wow, we see Ordnance pikemen from the Portuguese running straight into the Dutch base. That is not good comforting to see at all. Thankfully, the Blue Guards have just arrived to deal with that, but... These uh, Ordnance Pikemen, if they can find a factory, if they can find a bank, that would disrupt the economy of the Dutch and throw them into oblivion, I would say. Yeah, I mean, let's look at the Dutch economy right now. I mean, it's doing pretty good, I would say. Their coin is doing all right. It's really hard to mess up the Dutch coin economy because the banks are always working, bringing in coin trickles. As for the other team, though, 
The other team, coin is not looking good for France right now. And they really don't even have their full pop out yet. So I'm thinking maybe Lakota are going to start making gains here because they can actually afford to stay at 200 pop and France can't right now. Well, they're starting to stockpile a bit, but that's only because they got the factories working on top of their uh, courier de bois at the plantations. Do they have all? No, they don't. They could really afford textile mill, cigar roller, rum distillery. Those types of cards boost up the estate's gather rate, and they really need that coin economy to start going right now, or else they're going to get being out here. Yeah, only 159 population. And see how long it's taken them to recover that coin properly to get some more Dragoons? Not good. Not good at all. Now at the same time, let's look at Portugal. Well, Portuguese here. Coin economy is excellent. Food, not so much. And that's why you sort of see Dutch making their way back here and contesting this wall area over here again. So yeah, as long as that's going on, we're going to see sort of a back and forth between these two. A bit of a tit-for-tat struggle between them until one becomes supreme over here. Look at this. Look at these little vertical fighting walls that they create. I saw all the units were going like parallel lines to each other. That's kind of interesting, you know. You don't always see units form up like that. You would expect a sword to be this way, not this way. Because you... As France, you'd want to be sort of in this position to retreat. Likewise, Lakota would want to shoot up this way so they could retreat. Lakota at this point, looking at their resource count, their coin is not doing well, and that's why we start to see C-10 bows. This is a budget unit, you know, it doesn't cost any coin. It does have the advantage of having a little more HP than the Wakinas and has a better rate of fire. So, militarily, they're not useless units by any means. But on the other hand, though, France... They're forced to get veteran crossbowmen because of their lack of coin. This is not such a good unit, you know, that does not have a guard or an imperial upgrade since for France it's considered an archaic unit. It's not getting any sort of special upgrade whatsoever. So yeah, at this moment, Lakota's looking a lot better here because even if it turns into a trash unit war, the c Bowman would win out against these crossbowmen any day of the week. Any day of the week, pretty much. And crossbowmen don't even have a good rate of fire, you know. C-10 bows only 1.5 rate of fire. These crossbowmen, 3. Like, they shoot twice as slow. That's not good. It's not a good at all. Uh, Dutch skirmishers here contending... Well, Hussars. Not the best unit you want to deal with. That's for sure. But, add some riders in. Yeah, then you're good. Then you're good. Yeah, France has to do something about that food economy, though. That, that's where they're struggling. And, I mean, their coin is okay now. Their wood is pretty good so they can start constructing things now. When are we going to see some of these couriers come over here and start reinforcing this uh, base area here? They're going to need some buildings real fast to maintain that. And let's look at Dutch while well, we're at it. Oh, yeah, Dutch coin, of course, still doing good, but their food's kind of low, though. And that's probably why we're seeing a lot of cannons from the Dutch, like these horse artillery, also culverins coming in. Because if you can get away with a lot of artillery as Dutch, you can save up that food and keep it there in emergency, you know, to get riders out when they start to go heavy into hussars or into dragoons, maybe. Then you can make skirmishes, so... It allows you to play a little bit more safely when you know your food resources are really low as the Dutch, since coin is really your main thing. Yeah. Kind of interesting how we see some leftover blue guards here. They haven't been moved up to the front lines at all to help the rest of the army. Maybe because they're afraid of things pushing through again, like those Portuguese dragoons and their ordnance pikemen. They'll be able to at least shoot them and give a bit of a warning if they're coming in. If you don't have those units there, then you're not going to find out until they're into your factories. Now, this is kind of an interesting play from the French. They're going to actually start to use some forts to fortify their position. Yeah, forts, pretty good buildings, you know. They cover a lot of space, they have high HP, and they fire cannonballs, which, you know, splash, fly damage. So, if this fort can get up, no problem, they should be able to 
keep this area under control and also make it hard for both of these Lakota and Dutch players from crumbing across here to help each other that much. But at the same time, we see Curacaos coming there as well. The Curacaos, probably the, this is the strongest unit in the French roster, I would say. It's very expensive, but it does deal splash damage as a hand cavalry unit. That is big difference. Two splash. See that? They're damaging multiple units at once. That's what splash damage does. For these units like the Wakina Rifles and the c Bows, that is a death sentence. These artillery units here, that's also a death sentence. The only chance they got to survive is these writers. These very one, very spammable one-pop dragoons that the Dutch have. But, oh wait a second, we see... Oh, that's horrible! Don't do that. You're sticking the... These shock riders and the dragoons have a clear shot at your cannons. And you're trying to defend... Oh, no. Don't do that. You gotta manage your artillery, I'm telling you. If you don't keep your cannons behind some sort of protection unit, even skirmishers, they're gonna get directly hit by cavalry units, and they're not gonna last that long. They're really not. Oh, wow, look at this. We see Lakota going for another one of those factory snipes again. But unfortunately, France has intercepted it, and they started to repair the factory. They're not going to fall for the same fate as that team did on Dakan, now are they? Yeah, because once you lose your factories at France, especially considering their lack of resources... Well, actually, they're doing pretty good now. Have they? Yeah, they've started to pick up on their food economy cards, that's why, in their coin ones. They've got the textile mill done, they've got sustainable agriculture coming in, so... French economy is finally looking to be in a promising spot, I would say. So, yeah, they've learned their lesson here and they're starting to improve on that before it's too late. So good right now that they can actually afford to have some skirmishers over here that I think were probably coming from the fort when it was active to try to defend this area for their allies so that the Portuguese can lend their strength in the form of dragoons over here and organ guns. Organ guns are kind of an interesting unit, you know what I mean? Their range is pretty alright, it's similar to horse artillery actually, but the big thing about organ guns is it fires in a rapid fire succession, so... If they get all their shots in, they do quite a bit of damage, you know, quite a bit. And uh, most of that damage is just like going through damage, they don't have any real multipliers against anything. If anything, they got malices against a lot of things. So yeah, let's see these organ guns get to work. They're gonna get this war hut down, which is gonna hurt the Lakota a little bit. And then we see them sort of staying behind the protection of all these sort of shared skirmisher and light cavalry units here. Because they know they're dealing with things like bow riders and riders, which can easily destroy them. So yeah, they have to be very careful about that, for sure. France taking the threat of losing their factories very seriously. They actually have a fort right here, which is going to make it harder to raid in this area because the cans at the, from the buildings here are going to at least give you a bit of warning that somebody's coming in. All right, so yeah, you got to be aware of that. And now we see this fort coming up over here with the foundation. Well, where's the fort wagon? Where's the fort wagon? Where is the fort wagon? Is this fort wagon fort going to be finished? Or I just see like a 1 HP foundation here. Hopefully they can get it up, because if they can't get it up, that would be a serious problem. Well, they do have a fort. They have another fort foundation over here. What's up with that? Why is there two fort foundations here? Is the Explorer going to put that down? Is What's the plan? That's a big control grab by the French. And... Oh, wow, look at that. Dutch. Not a lot of coin. That's not good. When you run out of coin as Dutch, that means you're on your legs at that point, and you really need some help. Can Lakota help? Well, they got the food to help, and they can definitely do... Yep, they're mixing it up with some C-Tan bows and wakinas. 
sort combine both units in so they can save up on some more coin because they know if we need anything like the bow riders anything like that in the cavalry department you're not going to be able to do it without any coin so adding in some c tan bowmen which have some better rate of fire favorable trade in particular, when you have them on the attack dance like this, at the community plaza, they're going to do even more damage. Right? How many dances do they have on the community plaza as it is? Um, yeah, it's completely full at this point. Lakota economy is reaching its climax at this point with food because they're able to keep shipping in bison as needed. Do they even need any of these other cards, really? Doesn't seem like it. I mean, they've gone through really all their important cards at this point, so they can keep sending bison at their leisure just to keep up, you know? It's really good. So, at this point, we see Wakin uh, rifles and c -tans right up against this French wall over here. I'm going to try to clear out some of these skirms over here. Yeah, it seems like uh, Dutch and... Uh, Portuguese, though, have sort of been contending back and forth for sort of this map section for a while now, so... I wonder when one of them is finally going to get some mortars or something and start shelling out the other one and start moving in. One thing to worry about for the Dutch is this little wall of outposts right here. It's kind of a decent wall of them, you know? It's going to do a lot of damage to you once you start walking in that direction. Right now, though, Ducks are mostly sticking to culverins and horse artillery, though. I don't really see any mortars from them, so... I'm wondering, like, how are they going to push their way in? Also, make sure you use these riders to target these organ guards, because these things are going to do a lot of damage to you if you don't get them out. Don't worry about the Casadors as much, just get these organ guns and get out. You know? They're very expensive units, so if you can keep take. Oh! Wow, interesting. So it looked like Lakota were actually going to go for a siege themselves. They got the captured mortars, the captured witzers. These are the only sort of artillery unit that Lakota can make. They make them through their native embassies. It's sort of like an outlaw style unit that costs coin. So yeah, quite the interesting situation. Only one of these mortars remains it seems like. And they keep it alive and actually start sieging because you're going to need things like these captured Quetzers to actually siege across and start blasting at this wall here and really start hitting the French base. Yeah, at this moment, Lakota says, you know what, there's so many skirmishers on the field, I'm just going to use my coin to make Axe Riders. The Hussar equivalent. They have a really good amount of damage they do to infantry. More than the standard handcap. It's about, well... It's about 63 right now because they don't have the dance active, but once that dance comes active for attack, I think their damage comes up to like 76 or something. Something pretty good. You know, also we see teepees being constructed on the front lines. This is really important because teepees, as you know, they increase HP of nearby units. Also, in the back here, you see teepees built around the town center because it actually boosts up the food gather rate of these villagers. I think about at the same rate as economic theory, or maybe a little bit more, 15%, something like that. So, yeah, it makes a pretty big difference. You know, it does. And then, of course, they have this card active, the Nomadic Expansion. It also allows teepees to boost military building training speeds. So, when you put your war huts and corrals right near them, these buildings will start to train things a lot better, I would say. A lot better. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, friendly territory. This one increases the attack speed and range of nearby units, so... This makes the teepees even more powerful, so that these c tan bows and these Wakan rifles are shooting from even longer ranges than they normally do. Ah, now we see war clubs. This is the other trash unit that the Wakoa can make. It's got the stats of uh, sort of a pikeman, so anti-cavalry, siege, heavy infantry tag. One thing they gotta worry about though is skirms, so they have to sort of retreat, but other than that, they're a very good unit for getting into somebody's base with. And once you see like a big mass of cab or you see some walls, they can make very sort of work of them. So definitely consider getting those if you need something to go for a siege. We see Dutch sort of congregating over here, starting to 
rack up their units, and now we're starting to see some of their mortars. So, Dutch are going to try to make an attempt on the Portuguese base. Biggest threat, though, is the Culverins, but they got their own Culverins, so can they protect their army with these Culverins, take out theirs, and then get the mortars up here? To start shelling these outposts down? That will be seen. Let's see if they can do it. Well, that was the bad volley right there. The Culverins just got a free shot into those Cul... Okay... Well, that was a miss. Uh, oh, no. One down. But took one of theirs down. Oh, they lost two, actually, which is not good. Mortar's taken down the walls, though. That's great. I saw was trying to disrupt a little bit and cut into their lines. As the Casadors try to shoot from the front. Uh, yeah, I try force artillery a little bit scared to commit because they know about those culverins that are slowly uh, going in on bombard mode towards them. Coin, please. Yeah, Lakota's coin is like really low. Yeah, they really need Dutch money at this point, Dutch coins to, uh, yeah, sustain at this point. Because even their wood is low, you know, they can't go into the Sea Tans War Clubs anymore. They need some sort of resource to keep fighting. But as far as this fight is concerned, Culverin's actually got a clean shot of these mortars, and only one is barely hanging on to dear life here. So this is really not a good situation for Dutch. Can they afford more cannons, though? Yes, they can. But n not by a lot, so... They do have to manage well, because right now, 2k coin, that's enough to afford, like, five cannons of your choice, whether they're mortar, falc, Horse art well, horse artillery are actually more expensive than that, so only like Val Cover and Mortar for 2k coin, so you have to really manage your coin right now. Luckily, they're pretty maxed out on their pop. They're only missing about 14 pop right now, compared to Portugal, who has about 175 population. Their coin is actually in worse shape, it looks like, so... Yeah, well, that's because they're sending the organ guns again. Well, actually, they're not that expensive, you know, they about 300 coin compared to the Falcon coin players, so... Yeah, Lakota right now, they're kind of... They're kind of broke, you know, they've kind of bought the wrong stocks on Wall Street, pretty much. They need some coin real fast. And how are they going to do that, exactly? Can they... Now, they don't really have any more mines to put any tribal marketplaces on, so now they're going to sort of have to go back into the base and start using the estates. Unfortunately, native civs like the Lakota, they don't get a lot of upgrades for their estates, you know, gather aid wise It's really their hunting, which is their prowess. And second would probably be their wood shop, in which they don't have a lot of cards for that, so... In this deck, anyway, so I... Really, it's the food. The comida aspect. Hmm. Yeah, so the sort of impenetrable fortress of Portuguese outposts... We're only coming down. They were able to take a couple down, looks like, with maybe the mortars, some of the culverins. But now they're going to have to run back, though, because the Tsars are waiting a charge at them. With a bunch of skirmishers and organs getting ready to go into position and start taking free shots at them. While the Hussars distract. Yeah, organ guns forced to retreat, though, because a rider is right on their... Wow, he actually sh took one of them down. Quite good. Maybe on part of these culverins that are still active here. There's a lot of back and forth going here. I'm trying to see, like, you know, what's this side's doing, what this side is doing. Bug with powers of balance. That's the special ability of this uh, native right here that they have. The House of Jagalian. Basically what it does is it acts like a big giant Lombard ability, you know. If you have a lot of wood, it balances it out and sticks some of that wood into your coin and your food, food stockpile. But he said it looks bug though, so maybe it didn't put everything where it was supposed to, maybe? Yeah, maybe not. Oh, wow, we... Look at this! The Siege Dance is actually increasing the Siege... Does the Siege Dance actually increase the damage of these mortars? Uh... I couldn't... Well, the Torch was still active, yeah, so... It said about 656, 25 Siege, if that's true. That means the Siege Dance is quite good for your mortars. Quite good for them. 
But unfortunately, we see some volts here trying to make an advance into the Lakota's base again. Trying to maybe reach some of the farms. If they could reach into this town center and hit some of these bison hunters over here, that would be enough to disrupt the Lakota's economy and potentially defeat them. Let's see if they can do that, though. Or if they end up failing. You defend versus blue, I'm okay on my side. So even though you see Volts moving in here, Lakota are pretty confident that they can boot these guys out. Namely with Axe Riders. The Axe Riders, they do enough damage to deal with the Volt of Wires, and they can tank them with their high HP and their cavalry tag. So yeah, let's see if these uh, Axe Riders can axe their way through this attacking army here. Well, they're axing their way through the Hussars, actually. So yeah. At the same time, we see Dutch doing pretty good on their side. Oh, wait a minute, no, an outpost just went down. That's, that's not good. But other than that, you know, they're holding on for dear life. Resource-wise, hmm, not the best. France's food economy, though, now that's cringe. Portugal doing better, I would say, than their opponent, at least in the food area. Hmm. So at least the threat of the French is gone from the Lakota base, and now they can start thinking about maybe pushing out a little bit? Wouldn't that be nice? You know, that would be pretty nice for you. Uh. Yep. And, um. Which card was that? That was actually the Cigar Roller. So yeah, Portugal getting their final Eco card, it looks like. Wood is actually struggling quite a bit because he just sent some Ordnance Pikemen out. What are they aim to do with these things? Distract them a little bit? You know, Ordnance Pikemen, they're really good only against Cav and Sieging. So, I don't know what, what their angle is right now with these units. I would have saved that Wood just to make more of the Culverin Royales, you know. That anti-artillery artillery. Pretty much. Oh, here comes the Ordnance Rifleman. These are basically the uh, upgrade the Portuguese get from the crossbowmen, yeah. So, yeah, basically like an Ordnance... What do you consider an Ordnance unit in the Napoleonic era mod, like the 100 days or something? They're pretty good. I mean, they're certainly a good budget unit. They're like a budget skirmisher that you can use. So, that's good. However, it doesn't seem like Portugal is, uh... Well, they're not pushing out by any chance, right? At this point, it seems like Dutch are actually holding them against a wall. And now, Dutch are breaking through the wall. The only thing really keeping them from going all the way in is the, uh... Culverin. Yeah, which was just taken down right now. So, what's going on with that? Well, I'm wondering here, like... What is everybody else sending at this point? What? Oh, France still has... Well, they have infinite, um... Falconats if they want to use that, it looks like. Yeah, that, that might be something worth trying for France, is getting the infinite Falcs going, you know. Falconets could be a decent support unit here to deal with all these skirmishers. Yeah, they heard me. They heard what I was saying. We see the infinite Falconets coming out right now. Alongside horse artillery, so... They're probably trying to blast their way through these Lakota skirmishers so they can finally sort of make an advance on them and then maybe make some dragoons or something to deal with the axe riders. That could be a good solution. And then some uh, Voltaguires to deal with the bow riders. Yeah, sounds like a solution to me. What about you? You think you would do that? Probably. Probably. Most certainly. Um, but, at the same time, food and coin is not looking good for Dutch, so they really need to think about what their next plan is. Are they going to keep fighting? Are they going to try to tamper it down a bit and focus on resource stockpile? What's the plan for Dutch? Now, Dutch are actually going to try to budget off some of their expenditures and military by actually shipping in what is that infinite culverins they also have an infinite mortars car too so if they wanted to just keep shipping in the mortars to start sieging for them without putting down any resources to do so they could do that that is definitely an option right 
And if they are going to make any artillery, then they can just focus on training the horse art, while the coves are safely being shipped from the HC. Also, I like the employment of some of these veteran line infantry. As Dutch, you can't train musketeers, so having a musketeer equivalent native to add in is definitely a good help to you. Okay. WC flanking. War club flanking. Where is the war clubs? That's the only WC I know is war clubs. Where are the war clubs going to come in from? Uh, where are they? Where are the war clubs? Donde esta the war club? The war clubs. Well, right now I see Wakina rifles. I see a C10, and then I see some more of the captured Witzers. So I don't see any war clubs. They could have for them, though. I mean, they have the wood and the food for it, so... I don't, mean, I don't know what the real plan is here for Lakota. I see them still hanging on for dear life, and their food economy is still shining strong as it does in every game when Tushki does this strategy. Awesome. Royal Decree Grenadiers from the church. That's an unexpected choice. That they're not even upgraded, so it's like, yeah. Besides, like, the ability to go over your 200 pop, I don't really... Well, they're actually doing a bit of damage with that crush, so... Not, not the worst as I thought it was going to be. Huh? Ordinance Pikemen for the Portuguese. Oh, look at this ma this uh, bank placement. This is a bad bank placement. You're going to lose this bank, and if you lose this bank, your coin is going to suffer a lot. Like, what's the coin eco for? Oh no, they just lost the bank. And their coin is not in good shape either. You can't put your banks like that, man. They have to be have a wall like a box around it. You can't just leave it like that. Pick the bank part of the wall. It's, you know, banks don't grow on trees. Even though it might seem like that with their economy. Money does not grow on trees, my friend. And if you let your bank get lured by a bunch of ordnance pikemen, you're, you're, you're as good as done. You can't afford art, you can't afford skirms, you can't afford riders. You fall out of favorability real fast and get defeated. You do. Also, even your villagers cost coin as Dutch, your merchants. They're a coin villager. So you need to really make sure that you have all the coin you need to replenish your economy. All they can really do now is just sh ship in the culverins as well as... Use the little res they have to keep training stuff along the way. Also, they could wait for this Radetsky march to upgrade itself further. And then some Magyar Hussars will come in to aid the army a bit and provide a bit of relief against these Cassadors. Why are the Coverins? What? What is this? Cassadors in melee against Coverins. I've seen it all now. Why? Why would you let this happen? What is Dutch thinking? You when Casadors beat you in hand? What is this arena? Only in something like arena can I imagine that type of a unit fight take place. Casadors in hand versus culverins. Yeah, that only in arena can I see that. Just saying. And while I'm saying that, we see Lakota going for a siege. They're starting to use some of their captured mortars to try to shell their way into the French again. I don't know though, because technically these horse artillery are just enough to take off these mortars if they can get into range. Also, they move pretty fast too, so they can... Uh, yeah, they're gonna... Conceivably, they're gonna target these mortars. Yep, targeted that one. Two more to go. But we're, we're uh, the uh, Axe Riders, see I had a bit of a tongue twister there. The Axe Riders basically deny that and say, no, we're getting those moors in and we're going to start sieging as soon as possible. Friends force us switch to Musketeers actually, just to deal with the hand cab. They're actually going to go into bayonet mode, their hand attack mode, just to thrust their bayonets into the horses. Also, we see a combination of C-10 Bowman and Wakina rifles start to fire their way in. Also, some war clubs as well. These war clubs 
a pretty solid unit to stick in front of your skirmishers. Now, they are a bit cheaper, you know what I mean? They're a lot better than using, say, the Axe Riders, because in general they're a lot cheaper and you can afford to lose them. Looking at the Lakota economy though, they can afford to expenditure a couple of resources, I would say. So they really are in a good shape to go for a siege. Now, where did this crossbowman come from? Is it sort of a remnant from before when they were sort of budgeting, or are those new crossbowmen? Because if we're starting to see crossbowmen coming again for France. That means they're, again, on their last legs. So desperate, in fact, that they're actually going to have to send in some grenadiers. Some of these grenadier units. Yeah, these grenadiers can be really helpful because they have crush damage, so they cut through the armor, and they have splash, about well, four splash. So really a solid unit overall to start forcing their way. And it, or at least defending, because they need to buy themselves some time here to get their resources up. They can, can they ask Portugal for help? Not really, I mean Portugal, Portugal is also losing their resources too, so it's not like you can ask for help like when we had ducks before slinging some resources to the Lakota. That's not happening here. Oh, nice. We see some horse artillery taking some shots around these Casadors around the outposts. Riders trying to make some maneuvers, trying to go in because no reason is to keep yourself out in the cold there, getting shot by Casadors. So, I'm starting to see a tide change here, at least on this side. Lakota able to keep their composure and resources, at least for now and can, could conceivably siege their way in at some point. The teepees are going to obviously increase the rate of improve the rate of fire, they're going to improve the HP of these units, so as long as they're fighting in this vicinity, they could really wear down the French economy to the point of collapse. And that's exactly what we see. We see crossbowmen. Crossbowmen, this weak, archaic, non-imperial unit being mixed in with the Voltaquires. Care. Care basically means be careful. Be very careful. Ordnance pikemen did get through, and they are going to start attacking these gatherers. You need to watch this stuff. If you don't watch this stuff, you could very well end up losing everything. Everything in your economy could go up in smokes. Luckily for them, I think they're just doing good enough right now that this was a minor hit. And thankfully, these Axe Riders have a really high attack that they can actually cut into units like the Pikemen like that. So, good job Lakota sticking that out for your ally there and stopping a very possible loss there. Very important. Because we saw in the game last, remember, we saw the ally on this side drop out, so... You gotta make sure that your ally is feeling real comfortable here so they don't leave you high and dry. I don't think this one's going to, though. They've been sticking it out this whole game and have been going back and forth all the time, so I think they're going to stick it out for you. See it through to the end. And let's see here, though. Um, trying to look at these uh, skirmisher units. We see the Tazuki Prowler. Oh, wow, the Tazuki Prowler barely even lasted. Now, this is the one way France is going to try to survive. They're going to keep shipping in these Falconets from the home city. Every time they... Well, they should be shipping another one in right now. Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, keep up with that, because... When it comes to dealing with, like, these infantry units... Sorry, he got me. Oh, no, he got me. Oh, no. This is not good, my friend. <laughs> this is not good. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is, uh... Is, oh no, he gave up again. Oh no. Poor, our poor friend Tuski here. Always the ally on this side, always dropping out at some point. At least the theme of today. So, um, something about this Hungarian Plains map makes the team on this side drop out at some point. But maybe they can, the Lakota can win this on their own? KGG, okay, yeah. I mean, at this point... Uh, what's the resources at it? Was a good one. I agree. This was a really interesting one. You know, the last one we did was only like ten minutes. This is closer to three quarters of an hour. So, yeah, 
much bigger show than we had the last time. Oh, absolutely. I definitely agree there. Anyways, I think this is going to close out any second now. Lakota still have resources, but yeah, as soon as Portugal starts rolling in, you know it's done. There's not much else you can do at this point. Not much else you can do. Oh, wow, look at that. Resources. Um, Lakota. Well, it looks like the enemy team was actually... I'm kind of surprised here. It looks... Well... I can't explain it exactly. It seems like... France, who actually seemed like they were struggling a lot there, actually had slightly more resources by the end of the game than... Lakota did. Slightly better economy. Dutch economy, though, this is where it started to slump a lot. Yeah. I mean, coin was always going to be the highest, but everything else, the food. This is, this is a porn food. You know. In theory, if you're doing Dutch really well, you can technically take six mills of merchants onto mills and do really well. So I don't know what happened here. Militarily, though, Dutch did pretty good, you know. But then again, France, good management of units. If they weren't good to manage their units, they would have lost due to lack of resources. So this is how they came on top. All right, so um, there's that, I guess. I think I got some more castings I'm going to do tonight. So we could basically call this the night of... Uh, castings for Defam Edition, and I certainly love to do them too, you know, I'm trying to build up my portfolio of them as much as I can, so if you got anything else for me to cast for you, send them my way, I want to do as many of them as I possibly can, you know, I know also on top of getting more viewership for the channel, it also helps me to become a better player too, potentially, because I'm seeing all these different ideas that I would have never thought of on my own, so... Thank you to the wide AWE3 community for giving me new ideas all the time. That being said, catch you on the next one. Signing off now.